let's quickly learn how to use Gemma on Kaggle completely for free. There are a lot of different ways you can use Gemma. One of the ways that we are going to see in this video is to specifically use Hugging Face Transformers on Kaggle. The first thing that you have to do is you have to go to this particular link where they've got the Gemma model and inside that Gemma model, once you go to Gemma model, you have to first consent to the license of Gemma. I cannot show it to you because I've already given the consent. But first time when you go here, log into Kaggle, you would see something here where you have to give the consent and they'll ask you to check mark a couple of things and then you give the consent. Once you have successfully done that, click new notebook from this page and that will open something like this. After you come to this particular page, at this point, you should not see this green color light and you can change the title of the notebook. I will link this notebook also in the YouTube description for you to easily play with. Once you have reached there, the next thing that you need to do is you need to add a model. So for example, I have added two models into this particular instance. One is Gemma Transformers. The second one is a Gemma Keras. Let me show you how to add it. So go click add models here. So even if you, in case if you don't see this also, like if it is all closed like this, you have to go to models, click add models. Once you click add models, you would see the list of models available. You want to click Gemma. Once you click Gemma, you have to select the framework from which you want to run this model. So you have got PyTorch, you have got Transformers, Gemma CPP, Tensor RT LLM, Max Text, Pax Flax. I don't, I'm not very familiar with these things. What we are going to do here is we are going to do specifically transformer based model. In this, you cannot leverage TPU much. If you want to leverage TPU, Tensor Processing Unit, then you probably need to use the Gemma Keras, which supports Keras 3.0. But the current tutorial that you are seeing right now is going to be for transformers, which I guess most of us are quite familiar with. So go here, Gemma, click transformers, click variation. The 2B model is the base model, the 2 billion parameter base model. 2B IT is instruction tuned model. 7B is 7B, 7 billion parameter base model. 7B IT is 7 billion instruction tuned model. I have already selected 2B IT. So if you select a model, then you can select a version. And once you do that, you can add the model. So just for simplicity, I'm going to add the 2B and then click add model. Once you click add model, it is going to take some time to add the model. After it adds the model, you can go here, copy the directory path. So once you copy the directory path, you can come to the code that I've written for you and you can add the directory path inside the model ID. So this code that I've written for you should ideally work for the instruction fine tune of 2 billion and also 7 billion parameter model. So if you happen to add the 7 billion parameter model, then all you have to do is you have to copy this code, this particular piece of code from this, the way I showed you, like go here, click the three dots, copy the directory path and come back here inside model ID, you need to paste it. At this point, you have successfully added Gemma model into the current notebook and you have added the change, the code to refer that particular model. So we are not downloading the model here. That's one thing I want to be clear. We are not downloading the model from Hugging Face Model Hub. Kaggle has already made some tie up with Hugging Face. So Hugging Face's version of the Gemma model, the transformer version Gemma model is already available. All you're doing is add it to the current instance and refer it. That's the first thing. The second thing that you need to do is you need to enable a GPU accelerator. So if you go to notebook options and click accelerator, you would see none. GPU T4 2 instances, GPU P100 and TPU. At least for this particular project, TPU would not like make any difference, would not be helpful at all. So you either select T4 2 instance or GPU P100. So we're not doing a lot of parallel processing here. So I don't think using two T4 instances is actually useful. So I've gone ahead with GPU P100. So we have selected GPU P100. And at this point, our configuration is successfully done. Everything that we want is done. At this point, you should be also able to see the green color light here. If you don't see the green color light, you can factory reset it. That should switch your instance off and then switch it on back with all the settings that you have done. After that, it's very simple. Most of the stuff we have already done. 
The first thing is install transformers from the Hugging Faces latest GitHub version because there are certain things like the Gemma tokenizer is not available in the PyPy version. So once it is available, you can simply do something like pip install transformers. But at least like for now, like a day or two, you need to install it directly from GitHub. The U dash U is to make sure that if the library is already there, you will still upgrade it. Then accelerate for GPU memory management bits and bytes to load the quantized version. After you have installed these three libraries, then the next thing that you need to do is you need to say from transformers import auto tokenizer to load the token uh, tokenizer and auto model for causal LM to get the model and the bits and bytes config for the configuration whether you wanted to load in 4 bit 8 bit and all the differences just make sure that when you load let's say a 2 billion parameter model it's already a smaller model and when you try to quantize it further and load the quantized version the model may not perform up to its mark which i will also show you in demo like how the difference is so then create the quantization configuration so i'm going to use bits and bytes config and then load in 8 bit right now i've selected it false i'll show you the difference between false and true uh, how the code quality the output quality changes later on but this is the configuration where you specify whether you want to load the quantization model and if you want to load the quantization model do you want to load in let's say 4 bit or do you want to load in 8 bit so the one thing is 4 bit the other thing is 8 bit so that is a decision you make here then you specify the model id which we literally copy from here the the directory path of the model is what your model id is then you select the data type torch dot float 16 in this particular case at least b float 16 did not work i guess it's a mismatch between p100 machine so if you have and i don't think b float 16 also works on a t4 i'm not very sure i didn't test it so go ahead with float 16 but if you have got a different gpu that supports b float 16 then you can use b float 16 so i've gone ahead and used torch dot float 16 and i forgot to mention that you need import torch for this particular reason so you define the data type here once you do that then you have to use the auto tokenizer with the model id from tree train and get create the tokenizer object then you have the model object so auto model for causal lm from tree train you've got the model id from where the model has to be downloaded or for the local reference device map is equal to auto which will move your model weights and processing between your cpu and gpu and utilizes maximum memory then the torch d type you have got the d type data type here and then the quantization configuration right now it doesn't matter at all honestly speaking so you have got uh, you have got like the load in 8 bit is false but if it is true this will make sense now load the model i'm going to show you two different options how to use the model after you have loaded the model one option is to use it without anything called a chat template very simple use you input the text which is your prompt what is the name of our planet then you use the tokenizer and use the input text and create the id so you have tokenizer then input text and return you want the pytorch tensors and the input ids you take the input ids and then you use it with model and then generate the output and once you have the outputs ready and then you're going to decode the output and print it that's it so input text you are tokenizing the text getting the ids generating the output using model or generate decoding the output so what did i ask the name of our planet and it says the name of our planet is earth it is so as you can see because it's a smaller size model it still doesn't stop exactly at dot which is an issue that you might also feel with uh, larger models that's why we use sometimes the stopping character like what character you want to stop so if you enable stopping character like you can use dot to stop it there i'll ask a different question now maybe what is the closest planet to us send this question <laughs> mercury is the closest planet to the sun okay cool not to us to earth let's say and uh, okay mercury is closest planet to earth what rubbish um yeah maybe i can blame it on the two billion parameter model this is not a test of gemma and uh, do not 
take the results of this to evaluate Gemma. I believe Gemma is much better model and I'm dealing with the 2 billion parameter model. So that could be one of the reasons why we're getting rubbish answers. So the first option is clear. Without any chat template, we simply use it. The second option is to use something called a chat template. What Hugging Face has created is something called a chat template. And through multiple researchers and analysis, people have figured out that when you apply the right chat template for a large language model, it improves the result of the large language model. So one of the easiest ways to improve or gain performance gain in an LLM is to use the right chat template that adheres to the training of the LLM or the fine tuning of the LLM. So what we have asked here is we have given a chat format. So the role is user and the content is write a joke about Elon Musk. And this chat template also something that you can actually see in the paper that they've created. So I'm going to go, I'm going to make a separate video about the paper in itself, but easily, very quickly, if you want to just see how it looks, you've got the user, you've got the model, you've got the start of the turn, you've got the end of the turn. So this thing gets applied here. So that's what this chat template is going to do. So let me print the chat template for you, prompt. If I print the prompt, you can see, you've got the start of the turn, the user, write a joke about Elon Musk, end of the turn, and then you are saying start of the turn and model. So exactly like it said, you've got user and user start of the conversation, end of the conversation, then you've got the model and then you're starting the conversation. So you created this prompt and very similar like what we did before, you're going to tokenize, use the tokenizer and encode the prompt and then add the prompt uh, input IDs, then use model.generate and input IDs that you have got and then get the output and then you have got the decoding option. So I'm going to just change a thing. So here, let's say, write a tweet about Google's new open OSS model, Gemma, Gemma, new OSS AI model, Gemma. Let's see if it does anything. So create the prompt. Uh, we added the chat message the prompt. If you want to see the prompt, this is how the prompt looks. Start of the turn, start of turn, user, user message, end of turn, then start of turn, model. Now you expect the model to fill in the rest. Now take that prompt, create input IDs or inputs by tokenizing them, encoding them, and then use model or generate, get the output. Once you have gotten the output, then click the print and decode. Okay, start of the mo turn model. Big, big news. <laughs> it has got breaking news. Google just unveiled their OSS new model, Gemma. This model is like a super powered GPT with a focus on natural language understanding. Gemma can understand, generate human quality text. This is a huge leap forward for AI. It's already generating buzz on Twitter. What do you think of Gemma? It's actually a really good tweet. To be honest, it is really good. Now at this point, you should be very clear about going to Kaggle creating, accepting the terms of service, creating a new notebook, which is just like clicking here, adding a new model, enabling your GPU, installing all the libraries, loading the libraries, setting the bits and bytes configuration for quantization, specifying the model and data type, downloading the model and using without chat template and with chat template. Now, what I'm going to show you is, if you download this model, or if you want to use this model with quantized version. So right now in 2 billion, it mean, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Or in fact, it deteriorates the model's performance. But let's say you've got the 7 billion model. So how can you do? All you've got is go here, enable true, and then come back to this particular cell and run it again. This way the model gets downloaded once again from like the local reference that you've got, but in 8-bit quantized version. Now you would see the model performing absolutely completely useless. So what is the closest planet Earth? Pad, 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 pad. And I can do the same thing again for this. And you would see, you would see the inference time being very fast because we are, uh, our model is loaded at eight bit precision, but it is also going to be extremely annoying and completely unusable. And that's one of the reason it is, it is not like effective. So as you can see, it doesn't even generate any text. So keep it off 
when you are using the 2 billion parameter model keep it on and then see how the 7 billion parameter model does it for you so it loads again and then run the first one mercury is the closest seriously mercury is not the closest okay cool and uh, maybe I, I can ask another question i want to know which entrepreneur is closest to mars let's let's see if it says elon musk because that's how typically mb links work okay it generated everything let me ask which entrepreneur is closer to closer to mars or wants to go to mars maybe that's the least controversial question wants to go to mars got the text okay elon musk is the entrepreneur who wants to go to mars cool that is good it um, it manages to generate the right text now it doesn't give you a lot of text primarily because inside model or generate i'm not using something like max new tokens so i can use things like max new tokens to actually extend the time like 250 tokens would take more time elon musk is the entrepreneur who wants to go to mars and you have got end of sentence which is quite good and you can do the same thing with chat template so i hope this video is helpful to you in getting your gemma up and running you don't have to do all these things uh, if you reach at this point of the video and how do you save it like you can do quick save if you say save and run all it will run all the things quick save and i'm going to also enable it as public for all of you to play with so this link will be in the youtube description all you have to do is go here so i'll show you the link how does it work so you have to go here open open a new tab or something and paste the link or click from the youtube description after you go here upvote it if you want doesn't matter like I'm not focused on Kaggle these days. Click this and copy and edit the notebook. So once you do that, you can basically do everything that I said without having to go through step by step. You can then just copy the notebook. Once you copy the notebook, everything that we did would be there in your instance. You can first run all and then start practicing it. And as you can see in the instance that I created, I added three models. One is Gemma 2B, Gemma 2B IT, Gemma instruct to be n. This is the Keras model. This is the hugging face model, base model and the hugging face instruction fine tune model. I hope this was helpful for you to play with Gemma completely without having to rely on, uh, let's say, the web service or paying money to somebody. But we will subsequently see how to run Gemma locally completely for free using Olama next. But for this video, Play with this and let me know in the comment section what do you feel about it. See you in another video. Happy prompting.